confidence interval estimation. We have discussed point estimation and now time to speak about interval rather than point. In this lecture, we are going to cover the following topics. <clears throat> we'll start by the confidence interval, the confidence level and confidence interval. Then we'll focus on the example of normal populations. We'll look at the 95% interval confidence level as um, an example. And then, or the confidence intervals for 95% confidence level. We'll make it more general by looking at the 100 times 1 minus alpha percent confidence level where we can control alpha. alpha. And then we'll look at the confidence level and precision trade-off. Then we'll consider the general case if the distribution is not known, but we have large number of samples. And then the case of having a small number of samples with unknown mu and, and sigma and how this would... Uh, lead us to the t-distribution. So let's take it from there. So point estimation does not show the reliability or precision for the estimation of the parameter. You want to estimate the mean, you get a certain number, but you are not sure how close you are from the true mean. While well, interval estimation or confidence interval is a way to measure the reliability of an interval on possible estimates. So the average weight is this, or the average weight ranges from this to that with this level of percentage, 90% confidence or so. So we have confidence level, usually above 90%, and this confidence level is sometimes referred to as reliability. We have confidence interval, or CI, and that's called, referred to as precision. So we have reliability versus precision. If the interval is smaller or narrower, then we have more precision. There is a trade-off between reliability and precision. So if you estimate the weight to be in a bigger range, then you have a better chance of being uh, reliable. Your estimate will be most likely reliable. If you make the interval smaller, then you might do mistakes, so you lose some precision. So, introduction to confidence intervals. We have two main assumptions in our work. Population is normal distributed, so we will focus on normal distribution. And the standard deviation in the beginning will start with known standard deviation sigma, or of course, variance would be sigma square. An example, let's say that we're picking random samples x1 through xn is assumed to be normal Gaussian distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. These are standard notations. The sample mean, the sample mean x bar equal to the expected value x bar, which is equal to mu, and uh, sorry, the expected value of x bar is equal to mu. So we have uh, unbiased estimator and we have the standard deviation equal to sigma divided by square root of n, which means if we take more samples, then we get closer to the accurate standard deviation. For confidence interval level, 95%, we need to define the following. This is normalizing the, or standardizing the normal distribution. So we remove the mean, we make the mean equal to zero, and we divide by the standard deviation. So by doing this, we make the normal distribution standard normal distribution with mean equal to zero and variance equal to one. Let's continue with the 90%, 95% confidence interval. The area under the Z between minus 1.96 and 1.96 is the 90% interval because if you measure the area, the probability of being in that range, it would be 0.9 percent, 0.95 percent. So we're doing this by uh, doing the inverse of, of the Gaussian, which is equivalent to the, I'm just using now colors, I just to keep mu, so we need to multiply both sides by sigma over square root of n, and then we need to, uh, we, we need to uh, make sure that we have um, subtraction, 
so we'll subtract k and then change everything with a minus sign so far so good See, here we have a random interval this random interval but interval with 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 the width of this interval of course because it's symmetric we need to multiply 2 times 1.96 times sigma 12 by square root of n so if you are within that range then you expect to have confidence interval of 95 percent basically it means that the interval covers true value of mu with probability of 0.95 okay so that's the, the curve that shows this we have to be around x by this range if we are in this interval then we are good to go so the confidence interval the sample mean x bar with 90 percent confidence interval can be expressed in the following this is just kind of repetition this is the range this is expressed in terms of um, uh, inequality and of course we can write this also in terms of plus or minus the example of possible intervals for different samples with 95 percent now we we have um, note that few intervals do not contain mu as you see here in this figure here for example this is the value of mu we're picking different intervals and you can see that if we find x bar x bar is does not equal to mu so it could be shifted right or left because this is just the, the sample mean and in 95 percent it will include mu but some cases like those cases okay shown with dark we missed that's about um, in every 20 case we have one that is uh, does not contain the mean this is why we say it's 95 percent confidence interval now let's generalize instead of just looking at 95 percent we'll look at the 100 percent times one minus alpha so alpha will control the percentage of confidences if alpha equal to zero it means we have 100 percent confidence then we can control alpha so if you want 50 percent then alpha would be 0.5 a confidence level of 100 times one minus alpha percent for the mean mu if you want to estimate the mean then you need to control alpha and accordingly you need to find the value of z in the normal distribution that will guarantee that this shaded area is alpha over 2 and alpha over 2 here so what remains is 1 minus alpha percent okay so the area between these two limits which we'll call z sub alpha over 2 or subscript so we're saying is that to be in this range for the normalized case we need to um, to be in between that range of course or x plus or minus to be in that range this is just different way of finding it uh, we will call z is the critical value z that guarantees that we are in the range so we ask a question is it always better to increase the confidence level so expand the answer of course is no not necessarily as it will increase the interval width so our certainty will be less our preciseness will be less so now we can trade now we can trade confidence level and precision the confidence level which is the reliability is inversely proportional to the confidence interval precision so we need to specify the desired confidence level by controlling alpha then to determine the required sample size how many samples do we need to take to have certain level of confidence so n solving backwards n will equal to the following expression where w here is or small w is the confidence interval width so looking at this curve the number of samples would increase if we have if you want to have smaller width and of course if the variance is large it would increase and of course by controlling the confidence interval all right so we have trade-off between confidence and precision in the case of large sample confidence interval based on central limit theorem a random sample 
from a population with mean mu and from population of, of mean mu, then x is approximately, our, our estimation of the mean x bar is approximately a normal distribution because of the central limit theorem, because we are saying we are taking large sample theorem. So to be in that range, it's going to be 1 minus alpha approximately, because it's going to be like normal. And for sufficiently large n, we can take this to be the range of the limit. So we can take this to be the range of the limit. So where s is a standard deviation. OK, fantastic uh, sigma. So we can solve just for, we, we can get that by solving for x. And we need to multiply by both sides by sigma over square root of n. Now, the, conf the confidence bound, it's one-sided. We just This is just to call it a bound, either lower or upper bounds. If you take this side, it's going to be the upper bound. If you take the other side, it's going to be the lower bound. Now, uh, for the case of unknown mu and sigma, for the case of unknown uh, mean and variance, in this case, we have a small sample size and unknown standard deviation, then which is S, then of course uh, we can define T to have a T distribution. It's not going to be normal because we don't have, we cannot inv invoke the central limit theorem. It's rather going to be the T distributed, which is called the student T distribution with n minus one degree freedom. We don't have to remember the expression, but this is how the BDF shows like, where uh, we have gamma here denote the gamma function and V is the degree of freedom, the degrees of freedom, which is equal to N minus one. So properties of the D distribution, let TV be the, the D, T distribution of the V with V degree of freedom. Then each TV curve is built shaped, centered at zero, like this. Each, each T student distribution curve is more spread out the normal curve compared with normal curve. And as V increases, the spread, the degree of freedom increases, um, the spread decreases. So you can see how the spread decreases. And finally, as V approaches infinity, the curve would approach the standard normal distribution. So it's a family of curves that includes the normal distribution. For the case, if you want to talk about the confidence interval or confidence bound for the case of the T distribution where we have unknown mu and sigma, we can use the following bound, the following range for the confidence interval. So rather than using alpha, we'll be using T. It's a function of two parameters. We can take this as the upper limit here, and this guy is as the lower limit. Now, uh, to give you an example, to conclude with the example, it says 10 random samples, this is a small number, of percentages are given by the following. Then a 95 percentile confidence interval is given by the following range. Of course, we want to find n. We want to find the number of, we want to find uh, this uh, interval range. So this now, I'm trying to find the upper confidence interval with plus sign. X bar, we can find the mean just by sum and divide by the total number. I get 21.9. And now I need to find the standard deviation, which is also something that we can calculate directly from the samples, which turns out to be uh, 2.261. And now we also have the standard deviation. We need to find alpha over two. According to here, we want to have 95 percentile. So alpha over two would be 0 0.25, 0 0.025. And now we need to find backwards. This is the curve for the T distribution. It's not for the Gaussian. I need to have 0 0.025. I need to find this out in the curve. Uh, if you solve for the curve here, for the case of what what is going to give you, a, okay, we have alpha over two give you 0 0.025, n minus one 
we have the number of samples minus 1 is going to be 9. So I would search for 9 number of samples here. Okay. And then here 0 0.025, which is the alpha over 2. The intersection of these two is 2.262. This is the value that we are looking for. We need t as a function of 0 0.025 and 9. 9 is here, v, the degrees of freedom. And here is the value, which is 0 0.025. So that will give you 2.26. And we substitute. So if we substitute, we're saying that the upper limit, if you are giving 10 random samples for 95 percentile, if you want to guess the average, if this comes from the T random distribution, T student uh, distribution, then we have to guess that the, the, the value of the mean would be between the lower limit and this value. I'll leave it as an exercise for you to find the lower limit of the confidence interval. Please share your answer in the comment section. Thank you for being good listeners. We'll see you in coming videos.